Welcome guys, Alon here for Acon Productions. And if this is your first time watching, you have definitely picked the right video. And if it's not, welcome back. Guys, I am very excited to be doing this video today about Bitcoin. We're going to be diving into what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why was it even created in the first place. But we're going to inverse it. We're going to start with why. Now, out of all of the thousands of cryptocurrencies that exist in the market today, there's just so many choices. What's so special about Bitcoin? Wasn't it just the first one? What, what does it do that's so unique? And why would anyone buy Bitcoin? And more importantly, what is it doing in our portfolio? Why do we have it? And why is it something that we want there long term? Now, without further ado, guys, let's delve in. Always start with why. Using Simon Sinek's Golden Circle, we will explore Bitcoin in the context of why, how, and what, in order of that importance. Simon explains that people don't really care about what you do. They care about why you do it. Behind every inspirational person or successful organization is a powerful why. So, why was Bitcoin created? Bitcoin was created as a currency that does not need third parties to operate. A digital currency for the people, by the people. Now, what do we mean third parties? We are specifically talking about traditional money here. Traditional money is created by a government. The government has complete control over the currency. How much of the currency is in circulation? Can you create money? Who can create money? Who gets what money? Do they get all the money? Do you get all the money? They create all the rules. The banks then facilitate the transfer of money and make sure everything flows smoothly. But the problem was, Bitcoin was created right after the global financial crisis of 2008, when the banks, the ones trusted by the government to facilitate a nice, safe economy, just seemed to be continually screwing things up. There's a continuous cycle where every 10 years, there just seems to be a global financial crisis, and every time it's something new. But the story is the same. Someone is controlling the currency, they are manipulating the currency for their own means, and it always backfires. They teach us in economics that manipulation and trying to fix things, even when they go wrong, trying to fix them for a positive way, always makes things worse off. So what if we could have a currency with no one in charge, a currency for the people, by the people? This was why Bitcoin was created to remove the government, to remove the banks, to remove them from currency. Presumably, fed up with all of this government and banking manipulation, an anonymous member of an online cryptographic community going by the name Satoshi Nakamoto created a theory and launched the Bitcoin white paper, sending it through to his online cryptographic community. A few months later, in early 2009, him and a few members of this community successfully launched, for the first time in, he in history, a true peer-to-peer -peer cash network. It was no longer a theory. They had successfully created a system where you could cut out the middleman. How does Bitcoin work? Bitcoin achieves its purpose through a digital network supported by the computing power of thousands of people globally. These people running the Bitcoin software and code on the network are typically called miners. They receive Bitcoin by the Bitcoin network for their work. They are responsible for validating, broadcasting, processing and storing the transactions on the network. Once someone wants to send Bitcoin to someone else, instead of going to the bank to complete the process, it is sent to the network. Once it's validated, 
made sure that it's a legitimate transaction and not by someone trying to manipulate the system. The information is stored in information blocks. Roughly every 10 minutes, these blocks are completed on the Bitcoin network. They are chained together in order for everyone to see permanently once complete in chronological order. This way of chaining information blocks together is where the term blockchain technology comes from. What is Bitcoin? Quite simply, Bitcoin is a decentralized virtual currency. It is designed to act as money and a form of payment outside of the control of any person, group or entity. Essentially, no one controls it. It's community owned. However, due to having a fixed supply of only 21 million Bitcoin coded in, and with as much as 20% of the total currency thinking to be forever lost, due to inactive wallets, people losing their codes, a variety of reasons, it has become commonly viewed as a store of value. Due to scarcity, never being more than 21 million ever to exist, and most likely maybe only 18, 17 million to ever be in circulation, assuming never, you know, no more are lost, it is often labeled as digital gold or an inflation hedge, gaining somewhat a purpose that it was never intended to have. It was strictly meant to be a currency. Now, there are two ways to interact with the network. The first one, as we mentioned before, is as a miner or supporter, where you commit computing power in return for Bitcoin as payment, or as a user, where you have a wallet, where you can store and transact Bitcoin, you can purchase goods and services, you can safely transfer currency anywhere across the globe quite cheaply, or you can safeguard your wealth with your own digital self-custody. Now here we have the very interesting story of the first purchase ever used for Bitcoin. We have someone purchasing two Papa John pizzas on the 22nd of May 2010 for 10,000 Bitcoins. Now at the time this probably wasn't that much, you know, but at today's prices it's about 125 million a pizza. I'll tell you what guys, I like pizza but not that much. Currently the most common use is a speculative store of value. Users buy and hold Bitcoin with normal currency with the hopes that someone will pay them much more in their original currency for it later. Other reasons can be a little bit more nefarious or dodgy, such as avoiding government intervention, crossing across borders with lots of wealth, and some people believe doing illegal activity. But this is not as private as some people think. When you buy the Bitcoin or take it off the network, people know who you are and they can track everything on the network. It's all there forever. It's actually less private in some ways than normal money. So why should anyone even buy Bitcoin compared to the other of thousands options in the new crypto space? I mean, let's have a quick look. Look at all of these different options that anyone could choose to buy. With normal currencies, they are enforced by the most powerful entity in the region, the government, and declared legal tender. Just like Bitcoin, they really have no true value. The only thing that makes any currency valuable is the underlying belief in the system that upholds it and its purpose. If the US government was suddenly defeated, their currency would be worthless. If Bitcoin's network collapsed or was proven untrustworthy, it too would be worthless. The takeaway from this is that with decentralized digital currencies, their value fundamentally comes from their belief and purpose. Since there is no real reason to buy or use a different currency for no reason, there must be a use case, there must be a purpose. With Bitcoin, it's not enough that it just cuts out the middleman. Most people don't really have a problem with the middleman in normal traditional society. 
So with Bitcoin, its true value comes from being associated as a store of value and being trusted. Once the belief in the purpose is established and it can be trusted to fulfill that belief, then the size of the network is another thing that matters in the value of a cryptocurrency. Now let's have a look how Bitcoin compares to the other cryptos. Well, first of all, Bitcoin was the first crypto. It's the most proven and the most trustworthy, also because it's relatively simple compared to all of these other cryptos that realize that, you know what? You can't really compete with Bitcoin as a store of value. It already won. So all of these new cryptos are trying to do what Bitcoin can't. Faster transactions, this, that, complicated things. But at the end of the day, Bitcoin is simple. It's proven and it's trustworthy. It's got over a decade of occupation, operational consistency. It's got a fixed supply and good tokenomics. A lot of people don't understand that crypto, you can create currency, it can be inflationary, just like normal cash. But with Bitcoin, it's simple, it's fixed, it's not complicated, and it's viewed as a store of value. And at the end of the day, it started the trend of purely peer-to-peer -peer cash. It's a lot more decentralized than a lot of these other assets. Now, some of the weaknesses that people slam it for, its transaction fees are quite high to use the network, especially if you're not transacting multiple Bitcoins, which are currently thousands of dollars. It's relatively slow. It can take an hour for the transaction to go through. It might be four or five blocks, which are like 10 minutes each before you actually get the transaction in your account. And it's really unflexible to change. So all of these new cryptos, are bending over backwards doing all these fancy things but Bitcoin cannot change that easily that being said there are some opportunities for Bitcoin to grow layer 2 solutions so other cryptocurrencies or other tools can exist on top of the network to alleviate some of its problems with you know high transaction fees slow slow transaction speed they can fix a little bit of those problems there's also growing distrust just generally throughout the government and you know a lot of these governments these days are becoming closer and closer to autocracies it's actually a little bit sad but that also incentivizes people maybe to not trust just the currency that the government says is worth it especially when they're printing all this money in the background sometimes just the other options being bad can make this a good option and lastly, while Bitcoin is inflexible to change, it can still change with something called the Bitcoin Improvement Proposal. Now, changes are incredibly hard to implement, which a lot of people do like, because you need essentially 95% of all the miners, all the supporters to adopt the new code, which is incredibly hard. Now, there isn't really any strong threats with Bitcoin that are worse than other cryptocurrencies. To be honest, I think Bitcoin is probably the safest, the king in the crypto industry, some people call it. But it still faces risks that the crypto industry in general face. Every single crypto has a system risk. Bitcoin has dropped twice in its history. The last time was 2013 and it did result in the forking of Bitcoin. It was a technical error. But since then, we're looking at almost a decade of uninterrupted network access 24-7, which is quite, quite impressive. Banks can't even boast that. And there is self-custody risk. A lot of people underestimate it, but it is very risky to hold Bitcoin in your own wallet. You might get scammed. You might forget the code. Your dad might buy 10 Bitcoins and die without telling anyone the codes to get into the wallet. So there is a lot of risk there that a lot of people underestimate. I definitely see that. You get scammed, there's no recourse. With a bank, maybe someone helps you. Maybe they can claw it back, who knows. But if you make a mistake, if you type the wrong code in on the Bitcoin network, you're never getting that money back. And lastly, government risk. Now, the government cannot stop Bitcoin but they can ban you from putting money on or taking money off Bitcoin. 
since you want to interact with the local currency of wherever you're going, that's still going to be a pain. But that being said, governments can always be a pain if they want to. So let's summarize, guys, to ensure the video doesn't go too long. Why should someone buy Bitcoin as an investment in the first place? Well, to start things off, Bitcoin has been the highest performing asset of the decade. It has a good run, you know, but maybe the run's over. Maybe there's no more fuel in the tank. Well, the reason so many people like Bitcoin, as we mentioned before, is as a speculative investment. The idea is if you buy Bitcoin, the supply is fixed. Most of the Bitcoins are already in circulation. Maybe one, two million Bitcoins will be released in the next hundred years. And so many of them have been lost already. And a lot of awareness can still come to what Bitcoin is. The average person isn't involved. The average person doesn't want to buy a Bitcoin because it's so expensive because they don't really understand it. And essentially, the supply is fixed. You need to buy a Bitcoin of someone else. So what happens is, if the demand increases and the supply stays the same, this is just a recipe for good economics. And that's what Bitcoin is offering. Very good, simple economics, easy to understand purpose, store of value, much easier to wrap your head around for the normal person than all of these complicated smart contracts, interoperability, connectivity, Web3, all of these things that are just complicated for the average person. Why, why should they care? You know, which is a very fair point. Now, guys, it's truly a decentralized asset which has value. The governments couldn't stop this at this point if they tried. Bitcoin will continue to go if every single government in the world banned it outright right now. I truly believe that. It's a global asset. It's highly liquid and you can sell it 24-7 anywhere in the world. Now, of course, these are just some of the positives. It does fluctuate a lot. You know, the price can be volatile. There is other risks. You might put your money in there and the government bans it and it doesn't help you. You can't get it out. The network could shut down. Of course, there's definitely risks just with everything. But, you know, do the positives outweigh the negatives? So I'm going to say something that's really really against the current i think nobody will be saying this but if we're talking about owning bitcoin in your own wallet and you're just the average person i would say no you shouldn't do it personal risk is grossly undervalued in my opinion as we touched on before having your own wallet you know you can lose your key you can get scammed you can make a mistake when you send money and the industry is young you know there's a lot of companies with no regulation it's like the wild west in crypto you know a lot of the things have fallen already but it will continue to be the wild west for a while the government is slow to catch up and they don't really know what to do with this new product so for the average person if we're talking about owning it in your own wallet if you're not super involved in crypto don't do it the lack of regulation gives you no recourse now, ownership in exchange is probably a more ideal way. I know this is probably against everything you've heard, but ownership in an exchange is probably more of an ideal way for the average person to own it. It's better for taxes if you're doing it as an investment. It's just a better way to, to sleep safe at night and not have to worry about doing all this fancy stuff that you probably don't really care about. Now, make sure to invest in an exchange that's a non-crypto exchange. You know, they've probably got more regulation, more ethics. You can see a lot of these big exchanges that people thought were trustworthy shutting down because the industry is just too young. Now, without the self-custody risks, if we take those aside, I truly think this is a great currency. That as a currency, it's not going anywhere as a store of value currency. It's time tested and it's a great addition to your portfolio as a small percentage. If you believe in it, I would highly recommend to own one Bitcoin. It's not going anywhere, guys. If you own one Bitcoin, you will always be one of 21 million. And realistically, it's probably one out of 18 million because 20% of the Bitcoin is already unrecoverable. 
you know, that's never going to be back in circulation. And that's probably only going to continue to get worse, you know, or better, depends how you look at it. As the supply gets lost, as someone forgets their codes, their keys, you know, to their wallet, things like this happen, it gets locked up somewhere, goes to a dead wallet, so many things can happen. It's actually essentially eventually going to be a deflationary currency, which is really, really, really exciting. Now, what are we doing in our own portfolio? Guys, I really believe in having Bitcoin as a currency. So instead of holding cash in your portfolio to hold Bitcoin, I think normal currencies just can't compete in a tokenomics way. Normal governments are just printing money constantly. They do it on purpose to incentivize you to actually spend your money on the economy. It's all a plan, you know like money money is just there to grow the economy it's all a fickle game with manipulation as we discussed before that crashes every 10 years with something like this you truly have pure money you, you truly have a community of people that are using currency as a store of value so if you want a currency that stores your wealth in comparison to other currencies as you hold your typical currency, whether you live in Australia, America, anywhere in the world, you know, Canada, as you're holding these currencies, they're deflating. The government is printing money, the banks are creating money with mortgages, your, your currency is literally deflating. That's why they call it inflation. You're getting taxed on your money without you doing anything, just as you're saving it. So with all this being said, I really think a small percentage of a portfolio could work really well for some people if that's something you're looking at doing it's just always immediately available to sell as an asset which can't be undervalued it's immediately liquid and if you ever have an opportunity it's good to go while also holding a great investment now this is what it'll be doing in our portfolio if we have a quick look at eToro here we can see that I'm a good believer. It's actually our top holding at the moment. Now, don't get confused. It's probably never going to be 28% again in the future. At the moment, we've had a we've had a rough two months here. So we've had a lot of liquidations actually from stop losses. Might be doing another video about that. But we've been putting it in cash. So I really believe in it. I was hoping for a bit of a better month while I did help it. But, you know, you can't control the market. But I really believe personally in Bitcoin, guys. It will always be a 5-6% portion of my portfolio. And it will always be a great store of value. Now that wraps things up, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're doing with Bitcoin personally. And keep in mind that this is my own investment journey. If you watched all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. I hope you took something away from it. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. All the best.